Have you ever been totally fine one minute only to completely lose control in the next minute? Maybe after something super insignificant and small happened, causing you to yell at your partner, put your fist through a wall, or just completely spiral? If you have, in today's video, I'm gonna explain exactly why this happens and why it's a lot more common with PTSD. But most importantly, I'm gonna talk about seven different ways that we can actually prevent this from happening and a couple of ways that we can eliminate it from happening altogether. My name's Kayleen and after struggling with CPTSD for 17 years, I was finally able to find a way out and fully heal. I've since helped thousands of people around the world fully heal from their own PTSD, CPTSD, and past trauma. So if you or a loved one have PTSD, CPTSD, or a history of past trauma, make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell for new videos every single week. So the big question we're going to be answering today is why you lose control, right? So that's the big theme here. Now, what's important to understand is whether you have PTSD, CPTSD, whether you have a diagnosis or not, we all as human beings can only carry a certain amount of stress. So this is true whether or not PTSD is at play here. So I'm gonna draw a diagram. I love drawing this diagram because it's an amazing visual representation of again, what we go through as humans. So what I'm gonna do here is show how stress stacks up. All right, now again, this is true whether you have PTSD or not. But with PTSD, what's gonna happen, so again, we're gonna say this is stress. This is a stress, okay? So whether you have PTSD or not, here's what's gonna happen. With PTSD, the very first thing that's going to get filled in here is the bottom section. Now, PTSD is always running in the background, right? Until you heal. Now, again, I'm using the word PTSD. It could be PTSD, CPTSD, or just trauma in general, okay? So that's running in the background. Now, for a lot of people, that takes up a tremendous amount of stress. So that's going to take up this big bottom section here, right? Now, all of that is contributing to again, we can only have a max amount of stress. Now it's a little bit different for everyone, but there is a maximum that we can have. So PTSD is taking up a huge chunk of that. Then what we have is we have normal everyday life stressors. Now again, these are just things we go through as human beings with or without PTSD. So PTSD is already taking up a huge chunk. Then you have normal life things. So let's say you have stress at work. Okay, and then let's say you have, now you're gonna notice a lot of thing, these things are gonna be tied to PTSD, but you said you have relationship, stress, right? And then let's say you have, maybe on this particular day, you have like a tough commute, right? Or traffic, right? And then you have, maybe you also have kids at home, right? So you have kids or other responsibilities. And so you can see all of this stress just stacks up and up and up and up and up until we reach this right here, the very, very top of this here is something we're going to call the stress threshold. Okay, the stress threshold is our danger zone. Now I call it the danger zone for a reason because this point right here is where you're going to lose control. Now, I wanted to name this video a few things. Most of them were inappropriate, uh, but most of which I thought were quite humorous, right? So this is where you just lose your mind. And I say that lovingly because whether you have PTSD or not, like anyone with or without PTSD has reached this at some point in their life. Now you can see how PTSD is gonna make it super fast to reach this, right? So we have all this normal stuff. Someone without PTSD, they take all this normal stuff, right? And they're only at 50% capacity. So they can keep, having more and more and more stress in their life. Now, obviously no one wants that much stress, but they can handle things like that, right? Without reaching this danger zone, without reaching this stress threshold. So I lovingly re like refer to this stress threshold in this moment as the reason that, or the phenomenon, right? Where you step on a Lego and you wanna put your fist through a wall. So what happens at this stress threshold is not that anything is, 
extra extremely stressful. So we're not talking about something with a stressor of like 100. If we were to rate stressors from like zero to 100, you know, when you're already at capacity here, we're, it could be the smallest thing, right? The straw that breaks the camel's back that tips you over the edge. So it could be literally stepping on a Lego. It could be seeing dishes in the sink. It could be your kid, you know, pulling on your leg. Something really benign. Are you getting this? This is really powerful, really important. Something really benign very often is happening right here. Okay. Cause you are at your absolute max, right? You are absolutely maxed out 10 out of 10. You cannot handle anything else. Now, real quick here, listen to this. This is very important. Just because you can't handle anything else here does not make you less of a human, does not make you broken, does not make you crazy, does not make you anything other than human. What most people don't have to deal with is this huge chunk, this huge area taking up the, like for a lot of people, it's the majority, right? I wrote it as 50% here, a huge chunk of their threshold. Right. So we, again, as humans, we can only take so much. Now, what's interesting about this too, is like, this of course is a visual representation. This is going to vary based on the person, how much a particular individual can take. So it's going to vary based on the day, which is why some days you might feel like you can take on the world and other days you might feel like anything puts you over the edge of this threshold. So literally this could be stepping on a Lego. We'll draw a Lego here in green, right? So you step on a Lego, you get home from work, you step on a Lego and you just lose your mind. You just totally lose your mind, right? You put your fist through a wall, maybe you scream at your spouse, right? This is why you're doing those things. Now, again, are you hearing this is really important? You're not a bad person. You're not evil. You're not broken. You're not messed up. Are you getting this? Like, this is really, really important. You're a human being who've reached their max, right? There is a straw literally and metaphorically that breaks the camel's back. There is a point where things get too much. Now I'm going to talk about in a minute here, strategies to reduce these things and, and, and in some cases eliminate these things so that we don't get to the stress threshold. But it's important to understand that we all have this, no matter who you are, no matter what you've been through or haven't been through, we all have this stress threshold. We're all very, very capable of getting to the point where we, for lack of a better term, snap, right? So maybe it's dishes in the sink. I remember so many times when I still had PTSD, like coming home from work. And I remember this one time, it was our first biggest fight, my partner Brad and I. Uh, we were kind of living together at the time. We were like not officially living together, but we were staying at each other's houses a lot. And he was already at my house and he was making salad for us. He was making dinner for us. And it was uh, at the time, you know, we ate meat and I think it was like a chicken, chicken Caesar salad. And he, he was making dinner and it was great. I got home and he, you know, he, we sat and we ate dinner together. It was awesome. Then I went into the kitchen and now again, I want you to remember at this point, PTSD, I just got home from work. We already had stress in our relationship, but this was our biggest thing right now. There are a couple other things, but that got me to this stress threshold. So I was already right there. I was just at the tip of the iceberg. What's important to understand is I didn't, I wasn't aware of that. I didn't know that at that moment, right? So I walk into the kitchen and in the sink, and this, this again, so little put me completely over the edge in the sink was a very, very big chunk of lettuce that he had like cleared off his plate when he washed his plate and then he was done. He was hanging out in the living room. So what, which meant he had no intention of taking that big chunk of lettuce out of the sink and putting it into the trash. And for whatever reason, right. And not really for whatever reason, but it stressed me out. Right. And it put me, it was the straw that broke my back. It was me stepping on a Lego. I lost it. I started kind of yelling at him and we started fighting. We had this big, big, big fight over a piece of lettuce, probably this big in the sink because I thought it should be in the trash because it just stressed me out to see the sink was dirty. Right. And now it wasn't really about, this is really important. It wasn't really about the lettuce in the sink. It was about everything that came before. Because if the lettuce in the sink happened at the beginning of the day, we wouldn't have had that fight. Does that make sense? Right. And so what happens is these things build up. Now I'm not saying that you reset at zero every single day. That's an important thing to understand here. I'm not saying that you, you totally start anew every single day. You know, a lot of days you're already starting with the majority of this. If you have PTSD, a history of trauma, CPTSD, whatever, you're starting with the majority of this full. Okay. So let's talk about some strategies to actually be able to handle this, right? Cause the big question is like, okay, well now, now I know this is going on and this awareness is really, really important, but what do I do? Right? What do I do? 
Now, if you don't know already, I can't spell it, and I apologize for that, to save my life. So there's one word I'm gonna write on here. It's probably gonna be wrong. I did write it down ahead of time so that I could spell it right. But I have seven different things that I'm gonna kind of talk to you about in regard to what you can actually do in this scenario. And I wanna go through them in kind of a specific order. So the first thing that we can do is eliminate. Now, what's also important to understand is you know, I'm, I'm like visually representing this in chunks of like, right, we have like one, two, three, four, five things. It will not necessarily be the case that you only have five things that stress you out, right? So PTSD is going to be there or trauma, whatever you want to kind of call this category here is going to be here. But there could be another 40 things that take up, you know, like a, a very small amount of space. But again, add up, add up, add up, add up, add up, the straw that breaks the camel's back. So I want you to like make a list of your own, right? I want you to sit down and say, okay, PTSD, what are the other things? This is really important because I want you to ask yourself this. What are the other things that are contributing to me getting to that stress threshold, right? That are adding up my stress level, that are rising it, rising it, rising it, rising it until I get to this point. Right? Because again, you're not a monster for yelling at your partner, lashing out. I mean, you have a lot going on. That's literally, literally what's going on is you have a lot going on, enough going on where it puts you at your max. So I want you to ask yourself what things are contributing to my stress level. And then I want you to ask yourself this first question. Is there anything I can eliminate? Right? And so maybe one of the things contributing to your stress threshold is a phone call with maybe a friend from high school who's constantly negative and always gossips, right? And maybe you have that phone call once a week or a couple of times a week or whatever it is. Now, I'm not necessarily saying you should or shouldn't or whatever cut people out of your life, but there are going to be things and even something like that on this list here that you can eliminate. There are things that you can eliminate. And it's a little bit tricky for people at first because they say, well, like, if I could eliminate it, wouldn't that be obvious? And, and very often it's not. So I remember sitting down for the first time to kind of make a list like this, right? When I was still struggling, I was like, wow, PTSD takes up such a huge chunk. And then this, 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 right? And someone had prompted me to ask myself that question or something did. I was like, well, what can I eliminate? All right, well, I can eliminate this and this and this. Now there might not be a ton of things you can eliminate, but sit down and ask yourself, is there anything that I can eliminate? Like this one here, delegate. Is there anything I can delegate? Now, this can be something that you can, you know, cut a check for or something that you can communicate with if you live with other people. So this is important to understand. This doesn't necessarily mean you have to spend extra money, right? But maybe one of the things on your list is cleaning the house, right? And maybe for $50 a week or $100 a month, once a month, you can have a company come in or someone, an individual, maybe even a friend, we've done that before, a friend come in on the weekend, just every other week or every week or once a month, whatever it is, and clean the house, right? So if that's contributing to your stress level and you can write a check to get rid of it, great. If you can't, maybe there's one part of the cleaning, and I want you to think about this. Maybe there's one part of the cleaning, like the floors. You're just like, oh, the, doing the floors just like, or the bathroom just like stresses me out, right? It just, it really takes up a considerable chunk of this threshold here, right? And so maybe what you wanna do is sit down and you know, if you live with other people, talk to your partner, talk to your kid and say, hey, like wanna make a trade? right? This is normally my responsibility. It's, it's driving me nuts, right? I'm like, it's, it's adding to my stress and I, you know, I'm, I'm looking for ways to reduce my stress level, right? You sit down and you say, okay, so, you know, based on what I've seen, like, here are your responsibilities. You might know if they're your kids or your partner, right? You know, do you want to swap this for this, right? So you do the bathroom, I'll do, you know, the kitchen and the kitchen floors and the kids room, right? Something like that. Right? And that might be just a very simple conversation. And they might say, yeah, no problem. Like I actually don't like doing the floors or, or I could use a change or whatever it is, right? Or again, it could be kids for an allowance or it could be swapping things up for fun, right? There, there are all different ways that you can actually delegate something. You don't necessarily have to spend money, but think about, okay, is there a way that I can delegate any of these things? Then I want you to think about, and I love this one, my partner Brad is huge on this one. He has changed my life in a lot of ways with this one. Is there a way I can automate it? Now this is the word, slash systematize it. Okay, 
Is there a way that I can automate it or systematize it? Now, what does this mean? Maybe one of the things on your uh, stress threshold here is running out of laundry detergent, right? And so maybe, maybe it's just, now, again, this doesn't have to be it, like things that are happening every day. It could be once a month or once a week, right? That this thing is happening, but it's contributing in some way to your, to your getting to your threshold, right? So maybe you do the laundry once a week and every couple of weeks you run out of laundry detergent, right? And so maybe you go to the laundromat, like we don't have laundry where we live right now. So we have to go to like a shared laundry unit, right? And maybe you're there and you put the clothes in and you go to pour, you know, the detergent in and you don't have enough. That would stress anyone out, right? And so, oh man, this happens all the time, right? So I want you to think about, is there a way that I can automate or systematize it, right? Amazon has this great thing. This is not a plug for Amazon by any means, and I've, I've never used this, but this is what I would do if I had this, this kind of problem, right? Where uh, they will deliver like once a month. So if you have like literally a cadence like that, where it's like, okay, once a month, I need new laundry detergent, right? Amazon will, will do that for you. So you could sign up for their, whatever they call it, where they deliver it once a month and then you never have to think about it again. You don't have to run out of it. Another way to systematize or automate, right, is to, okay, every time I go to the, or the next time I'm gonna buy two laundry detergent, right? And so once I run out of one, I'm going to buy another one. So you always have one in backup. Right, uh, my partner Brad and I, we have this basically with everything in our life. So we have multiples of everything. So we have like three toothpaste. And the second we get down to, okay, there's only one left in the cabinet. Not we're using that one, there's only one left in the cabinet. It's time to order more, okay? Does that make sense? Really, really powerful. Now these three things alone are really going to shift the way that you look at stress. And we can do a lot with this. Now the next thing here is change. Not always an easy thing, right? Is there a way that we can change any of these things, right? Maybe you can change your place of work. Now, I'm, I'm not telling you to make or advising to make big giant changes in your life, but I do want you to ask yourself that question. Is there anything that I can change, right? And again, I'm using big examples here, but you know, my relationship isn't working out. Is, that, is there something I wanna change there, right? And we'll get to other options here in a second. My work, I'm just, work is just taking up such a huge chunk of the stress threshold. I hate it, I don't like it, I don't, I don't feel treated well. Is there another option? right? Is there anything I can change, right? And there are going to be things you can change and you can't change. And there are going to be things you don't want to change, right? Even if they're contributing to your stress. And we'll get to that in a second, right? Traffic. I'm hitting traffic every single day. Is there something I can change? Are you getting this? Is there something I can do about it? Now you might be like, Keely, well, there's nothing I can do about traffic. Can I go a different route? Can I leave it a different time? Okay. So are, and I'm asking these questions because I want you to start to prompt yourself. Are there things that I can do about this? Are there things that I can change, right? If you can change, I mean, look at what we can do so far. If I can eliminate, you know, cleaning, right? And if, and if I, or if I can eliminate maybe a, you know, a negative toxic friend, right? And I can delegate cleaning, right? And I can automate running out of laundry detergent. Maybe that's already like 10% of your stress threshold. Now I want you to think about the power of just reducing that stress level by 10%. Right now, that's a pretty small in the scheme of things, right? Just 10%. But if you are reducing it by 10%, guess what? You're 10% further from that max, from that stress threshold, which means you're gonna lash out less, you're going to you know, spiral less, you're gonna do all these negative things, right? Again, I'm calling this the danger zone. You're gonna get to the danger zone way, way less, or it's going to take longer to get to that danger zone because the other things need to fill that space. Are you getting this? Really, really powerful, really, really important, right? So the next thing, number five, love this one. This is my favorite. This comes with a couple of things that kind of go underneath it, is accept. Now, what I want to point out is every single thing on this list, by the time we get done with this list, every single thing in this diagram, you are going to be able to do something about. Okay, whoa, right? How powerful is that? I want you to think about that. I want you to take that in for one second. Every sing By the time we get done with this list, every single thing on this diagram, every single thing you write down on your stress threshold, and uh, you can literally fill it out like this. I'm very visual, kinesthetic, which you could probably see, right? Literally make a diagram like this. But every single thing you put down, you're going to be able to do something about. I want you to stop for a second and like take in the power that that has. I want you to feel empowered by this. I want you to get to the end of this video and say, wow, 
I can do something about my life. I can change this. I can deal with this. I can handle this. I want you to stop right now and just tell yourself, I can handle this. Usually when I do live calls, I'll prompt you to like put that in the comments. Put that in the comments below the video. I forgot we had comments. Right? Put that in the comments. I can handle this. Okay? And, and beat on your chest a little bit because you're going to be able to do something about it. So accept. Right? So again, looking at this diagram here, what are the things I'm going to accept? Right? So you know what? I'm not going to eliminate my work. I'm not going to change job. I don't like it. But here's what I am going to do. I'm going to accept it, right? So I'm going to accept the fact that I'm choosing, I'm choosing to not do anything about it. Does that make sense? I'm choosing to not do anything about it. So when it comes to acceptance, we'll do another color here. There are really two things that I like to practice and it's outside the scope of this video, but there will be future videos on it. So make sure you stick around for that but they're extremely, extremely powerful. So when I say them, they're gonna seem like very, very simple things. I want you to understand that me just putting them in a list like this does not do them justice by any stretch of the imagination. They deserve not only videos of their own, full courses of their own. You can deep dive on these things tremendously. So when it comes to acceptance, right there, again, there are two things basically that I, that I, I practice and, and preach about acceptance. One is positive thinking. And two is gratitude. Now, if you are not already doing these things in your life currently, I highly recommend, and this is like just, uh, again, not doing justice to these topics, doing positive thinking and gratitude, right? And what, like specifically gratitude. If you're not practicing right now, like three to five gratitudes a day, put that into your routine and it's going to change your life. So again, outside the scope of this video, really, really powerful. So what I mean by positive thinking is like, okay, so we're accepting this, right? So I'm accepting, I'm saying, okay, I'm accepting there's going to be traffic or there is traffic today. I'm accepting that this is the job. This is the profession that I chose. I'm not going to change jobs. I've made that choice. So there are two things that we can do about it then, right? To reduce this stress for us. We can think positively and I have a exercise I call the silver lining exercise. Let me see if I have room for this. silver lining, right? And so what that looks like is, okay, so maybe this, this is a job that I don't like. This is a situation that I don't like. I'm in traffic. Okay. Well, what's the silver lining? And this is where a lot of people, I can lose a lot of people. So I want you to stay with me here. Okay. What's the silver lining in this situation? Now you can do this in any situation. This is where I lose people. You can do this in any situation. And I can give you hundreds of examples of a silver lining in any and every situation. But what's powerful is you finding the silver lining for yourself because it does something in your brain, which again is out out of the scope of this video, but we will cover in future videos. So it's, it's uh, it does something in your brain. It actually changes your brain when you find Think about like flexing a muscle, right? You're building a muscle when you actually go and do the work in your brain. So what's the silver lining of this situation, right? So right now I'm stuck in traffic. What's the silver lining? Well, I'm stuck in traffic, but I have my podcast on, right? And I get to listen to maybe my audiobook, or I, I get to, you know, take some time for myself. I get to sit in the silence and be with me, right? Maybe I get to do a, a grounding exercise or a visualization exercise while I'm sitting in traffic. I get to, right? And there, there's an important thing. I get to, or I have an opportunity. Because of this, I have an opportunity. Does that make sense? Right? So because of this traffic, because I'm stuck here, We're not thinking about all the things we're lost or missing, right? We're not thinking I'm going to be late for dinner and I missed uh, the football game and this, that, and the other thing. No, we're switching to something else. It doesn't invalidate those things. Does that make sense? You hearing that? It doesn't invalidate those things. It just focuses us in a different path. So I I have the opportunity now to finish the audio book I'm listening to. I have the opportunity to spend some time with myself, to spend some time introspection, introspecting, excuse me. Does that make sense? Right? So that's our first exercise, the silver lining exercise in regard to positive thinking. Again, we can go so much deeper on that. Second exercise is gratitude. I do this all the time. I do this, especially when I'm traveling. It's but when I'm recording this around the holiday time and a couple weeks ago, I was traveling, I was traveling across the country. I live on the East coast. I was traveling to the West coast and on the way back from the West coast to the East coast, well, <laughs> the whole trip, basically, there was delay after delay after delay after delay after like our car broke down. We got stuck an hour and a half from where we're supposed to be in any direction. It was, it was a total mess, right? Uh, but plane got delayed, plane got delayed. You know, the flight crew's not there. The, you know, they need a pilot, they, you know, all these different things. And so delay after delay after delay after delay. Now, for most people, these things add to their stress threshold, 
right? And if you ever want good people watching, and if you ever want to see an example of how all humans can get to this point, go to an airport around the holiday time. And now I'm, I'm laughing, but it's, you know, it, it, we're all human is the, the whole point. Go to the airport around the holiday time and watch people stress, like watch people get to their stress threshold. And you'll notice when people do, because they'll lash out. They'll say something nasty. They'll say something mean. They might raise their voice. Right now, again, we're all human, whether they have PTSD or not, a lot of people can get there. So uh, airplane travel is a great way to watch this happen in other people. But what I like to do and what's going to help you reduce that stress, again, some of this, a lot of this is just normal life stress. We haven't even touched on PTSD yet, which we will. What's going to help you reduce that stress is gratitude, right? And so when I'm sitting in a plane and they're saying, okay, like now a travel day is a long day. It's a long day to get cross country. It's a long day to get out of the country, right? It's just a long day. You have to get to the airport early. You have to get on the plane. You have to board. You know, it's only maybe a, a three-hour flight and then a four-hour flight, but there's all these things in between, right? So you finally get on board after a delay at the gate and then you get on board and, oh, like we don't have enough fuel. So we have to fuel the plane. So another 30 minutes, another 30 minutes. Oh, we're stuck in traffic taxiing, another 30 minutes, right? And so these things add up. And so what I love to do and what's going to help you tremendously in any situation is to practice gratitude. And so what that looks like is, you know, as we're sitting in the plane and the captain comes on and says, you know, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, but uh, we don't have enough fuel for the plane and we're waiting for the fuel truck. It's going to be about 20 or 30 minutes, right? Instead of like the collective, ah, oh, that the whole plane does. Like, you know what? I'm really grateful that they noticed that. Now, pause for a second to think about that. I'm really grateful that someone checked the fuel and was like, you know what? We don't have enough to make it to our destination. We're going to need some more because guess what? Being on the ground at the gate, that's a really good time to notice that you need more gas in that airplane. Does that make sense? Do you see how powerful that one tiny little thing is? Now you can do this gratitude with anything when we're, you know, in the air and maybe experience a delay. You know what I'm really grateful for? I'm really grateful that somebody knows how to fly this plane and get me safely from point A to point B. I'm really grateful that there are controls in place. You know, when flight crew has worked a certain amount of time, they get to go home regardless of delays, right? Which delays the next airplane, but I digress, right? So practicing gratitude, I'm, you know, I'm grateful. And when I'm stuck in traffic, I'm grateful that I have a vehicle that can get me from point A to point B for the most part <laughs> consistently safely. I can put my foot on the gas and it goes, it's reliable. It's safe. It's predictable. I mean, it's a different situation. It turns from traffic and ah, into a similar thing. Oh, great opportunity. I'm so, so grateful that I even have a car. There are places, there are time periods that didn't have that, that didn't have that luxury. We have the luxury, listen to this, are you getting this? We have the luxury to be able to sit in traffic. So I digress a little bit there. Okay. So accept is number five, number six. And here's where we start to get into the PTSD part, cope. Okay. Number six is cope. Now, specifically with number six and number seven, we're talking about PTSD. All right. So we can cope with it. Now, coping is not going to heal our PTSD by no stretch of the imagination. Coping is not healing. Again, a little bit outside the scope here, but coping is not healing. Coping is dealing with the effect. Healing is dealing with the cause. Does that make sense? Right? So, but we can cope with our PTSD, which means we can do relief tools. Now, again, all these things are going to lower, 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 lower your stress level, right? So we can do recovery tools. Now I, I, I teach, I have a whole book about recovery tools, but I teach, I'm going to teach recovery tools on this channel in future videos that you can use anytime, anywhere, sitting in traffic at work during, you know, conversations in your relationship with your kids that you can teach to your kids. You're going to be able to use these tools to lower that stress threshold. So for here specifically, right? Tools, relief tools. Now what's really important when I say cope, I mean in a positive way, right? Because we can cope in other ways, right? We can do drugs and alcohol and all sorts of other different things, substances, video games, pornography, television. There's a lot of ways that we can cope, right? But I mean cope in a positive way. That's what's going to lower your stress threshold. Guess what? If you're coping in other ways, although it might seem like it's going to lower the stress threshold here, it's going to raise it in a lot of other ways. So positive coping. Next thing here, love, 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 love this one. Maybe my favorite one. Number seven here is heal. Now I know this is a big, big one here, but it's, it's all about processing. Process the root. Now 
processing the root, healing, excuse me, I didn't have my thing on there, right? So processing the root, healing this PTSD is going to eliminate it and eliminate it permanently. You getting that? It's going to eliminate it permanently, which means you will no longer have this big chunk. You will no longer, you are eliminating this big chunk. So this will no longer be there. So you can pop all of these down, right? And now you already have different ways to either eliminate or reduce all of these. So you're going to be at a very, very, very low stress level. And that's the idea to lower that stress level until it, till it gets to not only a manageable point, right? Where we're away from the danger zone, but to where we're at a point where we can live our life and we can enjoy our life at a very, very, very high level. So healing PTSD means processing the root. Now the root we're talking about is the, the cause of the PTSD. So trauma or traumas, event or events. And there are a bunch of ways to do that, which I will cover in different videos. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, let me know what you learned from this video. Let me know, I want, I want to hear those feelings of empowerment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bells. I do new videos every single week on PTSD so that you can regain control of your life and live the life that you deserve to live. So I love you, I believe in you, and I'll see you in the next video.